Shalom and greetings in the name of Yahweh. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, singular tense, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Ladies of the United States and other nations that might be tuning in, this broadcast is dedicated to women. This is to us. I include myself as I need to remind myself of the word on a daily basis. I've been um, studying. Uh, I did a study here some time back on the word love. Now, I would like to study the word love from the ancient Hebrew perspective in the next couple, two or three broadcasts, however long it takes me to get through this. Um, I believe that the enemy of our soul has perverted this word love. This word love uh, has been intermingled with um, perversion and lust. This word love has been taken out of context in that um, uh, the society of this particular government teaches not to correct your children uh, in any certain manner. Uh, They teach against spanking. Whereas the scripture teaches otherwise that if we love our children, we're going to correct them. If it's verbally or with the rod of correction. Now, I'm not talking about this child abuse, uh, leaving blood and marks. Uh, If you're that kind of an abusive parent, you need to be put under the prison. I'm talking about spanking your child because you love them. Correcting your child if it takes just something verbal or if they're little bitty in diapers a little pop on the hand if they don't mind the first no no we correct our children because we love them and we want to them to live righteously not in right standing righteously of what this world deems as right living but what Yahweh deems as right righteous living As we find that the laws are changing day by day, month by month, year by year, evil is called good and good is called evil. And to try to correct someone from the error of their ways constitutes cult, constitutes hate group, constitutes domestic terrorism, all this crazy stuff that people are coming up with simply because you want to tell the truth to correct a person from the error of their ways that their eternity will be in a place of comfort and not in a place of torment. All right, we're looking at the word love. We're not talking about the love what you think or what I think, but love from the ancient Hebrew perspective. Now, the first place that we find the word just love, now I'm not talking about variations of the word love, but we find it in Exodus, excuse me, Genesis 27 and 4. And the statement is made, now this is just the word love, I'm not talking about loved or loves or loveth, I'm talking about just the four letter word love. And I make me, as in Genesis 27, 4, and I make me savory meat such as I love and bring it to me that I may eat that my soul may bless thee before I die. Then we find Exodus uh, 20 and 6, and showing mercy, now this is Yahweh who shows mercy, unto thousands of them that love me, this is Yahweh speaking, and keep, this word keep means obey, my commandments. All right, this word love in the uh, Hebrew root word, we're going to root words now. The Hebrew root word love is the word ahav. Ahav. And it has three Hebrew characters. All right, look, some of you that study, that do any extensive studying of the scripture and like to dissect words, I want to encourage you, ladies. I want you to encourage to to familiarize yourself with the Hebrew characters. Your King James Version is written by Hebrew writers. They were all of Israeli stock. Luke was a proselyte. 
He's the only one, if I'm not mistaken, I'm open for correction. Luke was a proselyte. All the rest of them were Hebrew writers. Now, I'm not talking about they write from a Judaic point of view, like the modern Judaism of today. I'm talking about the old, ancient Hebrew, simple, dimple, straight talk, straightforward uh, lifestyle. A way of life. Simple, obedient, clean, holy living. So, this word love is found... In our King James Version, let me see here. I got it pulled up. This is so cool. I want you to listen to this. Just the word love, L-O-V-E, not the variations, is found 525. No, 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 no. I'm mistaken. Let me back up. The word love by itself is found 310 times. Okay? Now, now get this. Listen very carefully. This is the coolest thing. But the variations of the word love, like loves with apostrophe S, loved, lovest, you know, all the variations of the word love are found 525 times. Okay, the word love by itself is 310. But the variations of the word love are found 525 times. So you think, well, so what? What's the big deal? (laughs) All right. If you add 5, 2, and 5, what do you get? The number 12, which is the number of tribes in Israel. The number 12 also means divine power and authority. Yahweh doesn't put things in his Hebrew language and in his, and in his word, especially in the Hebraic mindset, for nothing. There is such depth of revelation If you could just get yourself to identify not just the Hebrew characters, but get online and look up the ancient Hebrew characters, which go much, much deeper. And that's where we're going to go in the next few lessons on this word love in the deeper realm through the ancient Hebrew. This is a magnificent study. Okay. So we find that the word love, all the variations, come to 525 times, which 5, 2, and 5 add up to 12, the number of tribes in in, uh, Israel. But listen to this. I found another variation, which is not loved, lovest, you know, that like that. But it's the word loving kindness. Loving kindness. And loving kindness is found, now listen to this, folks, 26 times in your King James Version. Well, what's the big deal about 26? Well, for you may not know it, but there are exactly 26 letters in the Hebrew Aleph Bait. 26 letters from Aleph, the first letter, to Tal, the last letter. And Yahweh Almighty is the Aleph Tal. He's the Aleph Bet. He's the Aleph Tal. He's all those letters in creation. Of course, King James Version reads, um, he's the Alpha and Omega. That's Greek. He wasn't Greek. He was Hebrew. And the Greeks gave us the Alpha and Omega. But Yahweh gave us his Hebrew, not the Greek. There were Greek-speaking Jews, okay? But Yahweh was born of the tribe of Judah, Yahuda. Of course, we say Judah for whatever reason. The letter J is less than 300 years old anyway. Now, I've often wondered, I'll just throw this in for a little extra off topic, run a little small rabbit trail. Because the United States laws in her early 13 colony years, when they were established... Law comes from Judah, or more correctly, Yehuda. But think about this. Judah, coming over to our language. Judges, judge, judicial. <laughs> Ever thought about that before? But really, it's Yehuda. But I thought that was kind of interesting, uh, interesting thought. Okay, back to loving kindness. So loving kindness is found 26 times and 
there are 26 letters in the Aleph Bait. And Aleph Tal, Aleph is the first letter, Tal is the last letter. And Yahweh is the Aleph Tal, not the Alpha and Omega. All right? Greek is the Alpha Omega. We want to stay with the Hebrew mindset and learn about love in the ancient Hebrew as it should be taught. Okay, then you have loving kindnesses, which which goes in, back into the same thing. Um, all right, I'm going to go back to loving kindness at the end. Let's go back to love. Let's go back to this word love. The word love, again, is the word ahav. Ahav, and it's three Hebrew characters. It's an aleph, and a hay, and a vav. All right? Aleph, hey, and a vav. And these letters are going to mean something really deep, yet simple, that tell a story about the word love. So if you would please, let's find a good verse on this word love. Let's go to Deuteronomy 6 and 5. All right? Deuteronomy 6 and 5 says, And thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. All right, now I want to explain something here for you that are listening in for the first time. I am reading from a King James Version. Everywhere I see uppercase L-O-R-D, uppercase G-O-D, and the errors of Jehovah and Jesus, I will properly put back in its place where humans have removed the name of Yahweh. I did not stutter. I said correctly the errors of Jehovah and Jesus. Jehovah being a misrendering of Yahweh. Yahweh is Y-H-W-H or yud Hey wah Hey, And Jehovah came over as a J-H-V-H. Uh, the V is the German rendering. Uh, Germans have their W as a V sound. And the J is less than 300 years old. It should have come over Yahweh. All right. And then when we know that our God, Yahweh, robed himself in a vessel of clay in the new blood covenant. And he was named Yahweh at birth. uh, What the angel got and told Miriam to speak over her son. That this would be his name. And this would be the fulfillment of Yeshaya or Isaiah. All right. I'm really running a rabbit trail here. Talking about love. And thou shalt love Yahweh, there is that uppercase L-O-R-D, thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Okay, this word love. In the Hebrew, now I'm just reading from just a Hebrew. This is not the ancient Hebrew meaning, because I'm going to break down these three characters in a minute that spell love in the root word. But just the Hebrew, ahav, means, it has several entries here. It can be human love for another, including family. It can be human appetite for objects such as food, drink, or sleep, or wisdom. It can be a human love for or towards Elohim, who is Yahweh. It can be an act of being a friend. It can be Yahweh's love toward man. It can be uh, an individual man, a love towards individual men. It can be love to the people of Israel. It can be love to righteousness. And uh, love to friends. So here we are. This is the word love in its Hebrew context, ahav. Now, let's examine. Let's examine each Hebrew character and its meaning. All right? This is going to be very, this is exceedingly great. Let's, let's look at each Hebrew character and its meaning for the aleph, the hay, and the vate from the ancient Hebrew meanings. Now, all right, the aleph is, the, okay, this, now we're reading from right to left, all right? Hebrew reads from right to left. So this first letter in the root word of love, ahav, the symbolic meaning is Elohim, God, or Yahweh, which is our strong leader, showing the mastery of Elohim's Oneness. Oneness. That's the symbolic meaning. 
The literal meaning of an Aleph is strong leader, strong leader, strength, or master. Okay, keep that in mind. That's the first character. So the first character is the strong leader or master, or showing Yahweh's mastery of his oneness. Okay? Now the second letter. The second letter is the word hey, reading from right to left. The breath letter, this is a breath letter. The meaning of the letter basically is revelation. Like, you know, whenever you're, uh, you're reading something, you go, Oh, that's revelation. You take a breath. Oh. All right. The literal meaning is a window or a lattice. Now, you know, you can see through a window if it's clean. <laughs> you can see through a window. All right. So you go, Oh, that's the second letter. So the first letter is the strong leader or the showing the leadership or strength of Yahweh. The second letter is the revelation, meaning, now we're reading from right to left, or a window. Now the Vait is the last letter, the third letter reading from right to left, and it represents a house or a tent. All right. Now Elohim is the one who builds his house. And the example that's given is the house that divides what is within the family from what or who is outside of a family, strangers. Now, listen to the picture in its entirety. This is the word love, ahav, three Hebrew characters. And you put all of the meanings of this together. And this is the picture. We love Ahav, Yahweh. He is the strong leader and the master who gives revelation to his house that divides what is within his family from what or who is outside of the family, strangers. Now, how is a family identified, ladies? How is your family identified? By your husband's name, is it not? So, our husband's name is Yahweh. Whether you know it or not, his name is Yahweh. It never was any kind of a Shua name, or a Jesus name, or any other kind of a name of foreign gods. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob called on only one, Yahweh. So, it's Yahweh. In the Hebrew, now this is the word love. This is the meaning of the word love. Our love, we are to love Yahweh, the strong leader who gives revelation to his house, those called by his name, that divide what is within his family from who or what is outside of the family strangers. Now we know that you can read it everywhere in the scriptures, in the first blood covenant and the second blood covenant, how that when the strangers came in to sojourn among the children of Israel, the same law that applied to the children of Israel was the same law that was to apply to the sojourner or the stranger. Now we have our Mashiach, who invites all to come into repentance, and when we're born of the water and of the Spirit, and we're baptized, we receive his name of Yahweh in baptism, in immersion, in water, total immersion in water, then we become part of the root of Jesse, which is Yahweh Mashiach, the door. Wow. So who are the strangers? Who's the strangers? Those that do not have the family name Yahweh. Such revelation in a simple Hebrew root word for love. Now this is the word love from the Hebrew perspective. It's an action word. It demonstrates holiness or separation. It demonstrates revelation that only comes 
through the family that wear the name of Yahweh. This is something for you to think about. Now look, I want you to stop right now. If I've made you so mad, well, I've got the Holy Spirit. All right, let, let me tell you something. I'm not out to tell you you don't have nothing and you don't have any experience at all in the Holy Spirit because I would be a fool to do that. The word plainly says that unto every man or for us women, since this is a women's broadcast, is given the measure of faith. All right? So every human being that's ever lived, I don't care if you think you're an atheist. I know what y'all's word says. You've got a measure of faith. I don't care if you're the biggest liar or murderer or, or homosexual or, or lesbian or, or, uh, or whoremonger. I don't care what you are. You've been given a measure of faith by Yahweh Almighty from birth. He knew you before you were born. And Yahweh deals with that human being all their life. But because we have a, a will, we have a, uh, we have a, uh, we have a will to, a human will that's given a right to choose because Yahweh does not want robot service. Yahweh does not want, um, he, he wants you to love him and crush your will for his will for your life. This is his love that he has for us. That he would be butchered and become sin. He would leave his, his comforts of heaven to live in a robe of flesh and bone like we do and experience hate and persecution for telling the truth and be crucified for our sins. This is what got him killed because he was Yahweh manifest in flesh. So this is love. This is the love in the Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew. Wow. And guess what? We love him with all our heart. What is our heart? This is our mind and our will. We love him with all our soul, which is our emotions and five senses. Remember, emotions and five senses are contrary to faith. Always remember that. If you will crucify your emotions and obey the word of Yahweh against your human feelings, 99% out of the time, you will probably be in the will of Yahweh. So we love him with all our heart, which is our mind and our will. We love him with all of our soul, which is our five senses, our emotions, and all of our might. Our might is our breath, our strength. And as we take deep breaths, when we use our strength, the breath Yahweh gave because he loved us. Even though we want everyone to grasp this marvelous truth, we know, we know, the majority will not receive this truth. As the scripture says, hell hath enlarged herself. And remember, just because we know Yahweh is Elohim and Mashiach does not mean that we have arrived either. The word says, he that endureth unto the end shall be saved. Hmm. My brothers and sisters, we have much enduring just ahead of us. We must work quickly while we can still have the means to tell the truth. Soon all of these avenues of presenting truth shall cease and the real trial of our faith will be upon us. May Yahweh help us all to endure unto our end. But we must, 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 must truly love. We must love Yahweh more than our husbands. We must love Yahweh more than our wives, in reference to the men now. Husbands, male gender. Wives, female gender. Children and grandchildren. And our very own life. We've got to love Yahweh more than our, our very own life. And mom, you who, women who claim to have the Holy Spirit, you better start teaching your children to learn how to die and be tortured for the truth, for the word. The word of Yahweh is truth. Did he not love us more than his own life? Did he? Shall we not also drink of the cup he drank of? 
May the Holy Spirit of Yahweh send that same angel that strengthened Mashiach, Yahweh, in the garden. That same angel that strengthened him in the garden of Gethsemane. May that same angel strengthen us when our end is upon us. And he will. He will. We must trust him. And teach our children to trust him unto death. That's the true keeper of a household. That word keep, mom, means to guard. You're not just cleaning house and cooking and all this junk. You're guarding. Number one, you're guarding your own soul. Number two, you're guarding your child's soul. And we train them up. That word train isn't teach, it's drill. Drill, drill, drill. Train a child up in the way that they should go. And when they're old, however old is, they'll not depart. Maybe they might go wayward for a while. But when they're old, y'all was going to get a hold of that heart if you've trained them up in righteousness. I'm not talking about all this foolishness. You moms who are giving your children all these stinking video games and it's a funsy playtime, you better start teaching your children some responsibility. You need to teach your children how to love Yahweh with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their soul. But how can your child learn if you're not setting the example, Mom, who's supposed to be the keeper or the guard of your soul and your child's soul, the keeper of the house? How can they learn without a righteous, godly example? I pray that this provokes you to think. Next week, I want to dissect the word commandment, if Yahweh works it out. So this is the word love from the Hebrew perspective. There's an action. There's a depth. It's not just, uh, oh, I believe the word of God. It's living it within and without. Holy within, ladies. Holy, modest, separated, without got to stop if you want to know why Yahweh is your only Savior, Redeemer and Mashiach, that's the only name he ever had please write to Jerry or Kathy we mail out free audio CDs explaining and scripture literature on why the name of your God and your Mashiach, your Elohim and your Mashiach is only named Yahweh again please write to Jerry or Kathy Our mailing address is 775 McDonald Road. Again, 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia. Covington, Georgia. Our zip code is 3, that's the United States of America, Georgia, okay? (laughs) The zip code is 30014. Again, 30014, or we invite you to call us at... 770-784-0703. That number again is 770-784-0703. Or, if you got connection to the internet, you can go to the YouTube site. When you get to the YouTube site, type in Hour of Truth 777 And watch my husband teach using the King James Version and the Hebrew writings why your Elohim, your God, and your Mashiach is only named Yahweh. You can watch our televised broadcasts online. Again, go to the YouTube site. Type in Hour of Truth 777. The purpose of my broadcast is to provoke women to study. To provoke women to repent. To provoke women to search this out. To see if the things that I share with you are not truth. There's a lot of meetings going on out there about the word love. And it's just not so. It's not what you think love is. It's not what I think love is. But from Yahweh's language, which was the Hebrew. From Yahweh's language... There is a depth that has really, it really puts a goal, something that you want to reach for. A higher height, 
a deeper depth in his word. Until next week, at the same time, may Yahweh richly encourage you women to search his word. Shalom.